this is Gabby with the Nomadic Family. Um, I'm very, very excited. I have two very distinguished guests with us today. Um, we are at Pillows and Toast Heritage Hostel, and these are the owners. I'm rubbing elbows with like the big wigs, right? Soon I'm gonna forget all you little people because I have like friends who like, you know, have connections. <laughs> so they're a little snobby, not very friendly, a little, you know, arrogant, but that's okay. We, we're trying to, to learn to be friends with them. So could you introduce yourselves and tell us um, just say something about yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Jason. Uh, hello, my name is Kape. Kape. And tell us, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is white. Great. It's because I'm colorblind, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's white. <laughs> Black and white, so white. She's really good guy. From the choice of the two colors, I can see. <laughs> Well, I was about to say black, but uh, it doesn't quite suit my character. Probably about maybe. See the t shirts. <laughs> yeah. See the t shirts. Yeah, probably blue. Yeah. Blue. Yeah. Dark blue, light blue. Um, navy. Navy? I was going to say navy. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you guys um, end up working together? You said you're friends from high school? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, friends from 1999. 1999. Yeah, yeah. There's a Prince song. 1999. <laughs> Isn't that a song? No. Sorry. Sorry. It's not big in Singapore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so since high school, yes. and then you guys had this dream that you wanted to open hostel. Well, we had a good business together I mean, for yeah. a long, longer some time. Um, but a hostel was maybe three years back, two or three years back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just an idea that came up. Um, we have been. I mean, I, I was studying. Speak up a, a little bit. I was studying in the U.S. and uh, Jason came to visit me, and then we actually stayed in a few hostels in the U.S. And uh, after that, he kind of picked it up. And I can see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. He, he went traveling in, in Asia and then, yeah, I think he backpacking in Taiwan, China, Malaysia, yeah. wow. places like that. Especially the China hostels were really, really nice as well. What makes people. what makes Chinese hostels like nice? First, they have lots of space. Uh, yeah. Secondly, you have all the people from different cultures going to China now and learning the language, wow. trying to speak Chinese. And me being a Chinese, I could share with them the language a little bit. Wow. They could tell me about you know, their lives back home. Uh, okay. It's really fun. We, had, we taught Finnish Chinese. We taught. To people who are Antarctica and stuff. Wow! It's, I think I read that one out of every five people in the world is Chinese. Really? Yeah. I read. I look. I look at Wikipedia. Yeah. Well, I, I do know that English, Spanish, and Chinese are the three biggest languages. Yeah. It's quite cool that we know two of them in Singapore. Hey, that's awesome. Two thirds. So, do most Singaporeans speak Chinese? Uh, they learn Chinese. Okay. Uh, whether they speak it, it's more a preference. So if I come from Chinese origin, more likely because it's reinforced at home, I'll speak. Mm -hmm. But if I'm from Indian origin, maybe I learn it in school, but I won't use it as much. Uh, no. So if you're Indian or, or Malay, then you, uh, yeah, then they'll pick up Malay or Tamil, which is more than mother tongue. So, so you get to okay. speak and learn English yeah. and your mother tongue language in school. Ah. So you get to choose what's your mother tongue language. You and do all the um, the the Malay and the. Um, Indian and the Chinese go to the same schools or are yes. they separate schools? No, we go to the same schools, we mix okay. together, have fun together. So that's how we develop this language called Singlish. Our own, Singlish. Our very own Singlish. You have to language. move in, you're being cut out. Yeah. Ah. This one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you cut out. Yeah. So Singlish, Singaporean English, uniquely our own. Is it, is it actually um, considered <clears throat> slang and street talk or is it acceptable, educated people speak Singlish? Uh, it's more of a slang, I would say. Okay. No. Yeah. Someday I hope it will become accepted. Is it cool? It's a journal article maybe. <laughs> Give us an, an example. What is Singlish? Singlish is it has a mix of spattering of Hokkien and Cantonese. So as la, le, lo. Okay, you're these these what words. Is that? They, 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 they end the sentence. They, they so, punctuate our sentences basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we tend to actually have a little I would say we will mix in multiple different languages within the English language to ah. make it really our own. And a lot of times, because of the uniqueness of our culture, where we are multicultural, yes. you bring in a Malay phrase from here and there, or a Chinese phrase to really insert in an English sentence, wow. and that changes the whole thing. And, and pretty much, it's pretty unique to Singaporeans who would be able to understand it, and a lot of people would be just staring at you. The, the, chi <laughs> the, chi the Chinese phrase for wet market in Singapore. Wait, wet it's market? Wet market. What you is know, wet market? Where you buy your your, your vegetables, your fish, ah, your poultry, okay, and stuff. Okay. You, you, you buy that, the place that you, in Chinese in Singapore is called Ba Sha, which, you, ba which sha. it's Chinese, it's Mandarin, but the Taiwanese and China, uh, the people from China wouldn't understand that. It's only Singaporean Chinese. And it came from Malay word like Ba Sha, 
Basar. Yes. What or is Bazaar? Bas like Bazaar. Oh, okay. Bazaar, Pasar. And Chinese okay. adopted the words as Basha in Singapore. Only in Singapore and Chinese. Wow. And it's accepted in all Singapore and Chinese textbooks. Yes. Wow. I never knew it was not accepted in Taiwan or China. So, so the... Okay, so there is no Singaporean language. No. There is no language that is Singapore. You guys use English, Malay, Tamil, Tamil and Mandarin. 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 Yes. And then there's combinations. And then there's a dialect group, so if you're Chinese, you have sub-ethnic groups. Okay. So you have Hokkien, Cantonese, Hakka, Hainanese. And do all of those dialects understand each other or no? no? Wow. So we get phrases of those words mixed in Singlish. So Singlish is like a huge melting pot. So there's Ken La, Ken Lo, Ken Le. So it, by, somebody can say Ken. You ask me, can I can, can I do something? I say Ken La. That means like yes, but grudgingly. <laughs> <laughs> ken Lo, uh, uh, Ken Lo. I said okay, uh, fine. Oh wait, okay, I want to learn the, the yes grudgingly for my children. How do I say that? Ken La. Ken La. So everything <laughs> they ask me, oh, it's just crazy because in Hebrew, yeah. Ken is yes. Yes. Ah. It means yes. So I'll say Ken la, and that means yes, but like back off. Yeah, I don't like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all different. Yeah. Okay, so Ken la is grudgingly, and then. Yes, Ken le. Ken le. Ken le uh, is what? What we say Ken le? Ken le. Yes, but you know me. <laughs> ken le is like mm, actually you can't. Oh, no, like I, I realized you can't. Like it's a surprise yeah. thing. I didn't think of that, but yeah, Ken le. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ken le. Actually, you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ken law is like. Um, I did. Uh, I was like, oh, sweet. I'm a bit uh, hesitant about why you want to do that, but okay, if you want to do that, go ahead. Wow. Ken Lo. How rich! So Ken La, Ken Le, Ken, Ken Lo. Yeah, it's How and they have, they're from different dialects. The Le Le Lo are from different dialects. How beautiful! Yeah. All right. So from now on, when I ask you something, they will be like, <coughs> Ken La. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know English if you understand Gabby's future videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I start to do because sometimes I start babbling. Yeah. You know, me babble. <laughs> Who could imagine? So what I do is on the very end of the video, I put a code word and I tell people, if you heard the whole video, write this in the comment. So I'm going to see if people actually listen till the end. <laughs> <laughs> you should put the code word somewhere like three quarters part of the video. Uh, so, so they can fast forward. Right? Uh, uh, no, but I want them to hear all of my babbling. Uh, you, you guys have wives. You know how fun it is when the wife starts talking. <laughs> Yes, uh, I just need to catch an yes, last dear, word. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. The trick is to just catch the first and last five words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. No dinner. Okay, I got it. Ken La. Ken La. All right, so uh, you know what? I'll, maybe I'll make a list of words in Singlish, and those will be the code words. Mm. And then you have to, like, you know, Ken La. Hello, Kenley. I like Watch it. Out, awesome. Yeah. Is there something? If okay, if a tourist were considering coming to Singapore, yeah. um, what would, why would, why would they come here? Why would you say it's a good place for tourists? Because I see tourists here like crazy. Why? What? What draws tourists to Singapore? What's unique about your country? Your country, city, state, neighborhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dot. Well. Province. Province. <laughs> well. On the surface, there's a huge big advertising, the mega boards will tell you about Marina Bay Sands, they'll tell you about Esplanade, they'll tell you about Universal Studios in Singapore. That's the huge tourist fee. So that's all glittery and nice, yeah. good to see. But beneath all that, there's the local culture as well. I just told you about the different dialect groups there. Yeah. So not only did they contribute to the languages, they contributed to food. Ah. To the food. So, some, so, so Gabby can understand that. Food. <laughs> so we have mix, so we have Hainanese chicken rice, we have Hakka, Yong Tau Fu, maybe. We that have, was, are those those dumplings you showed on your, on your Facebook are those, page? Are those are from China. Those are northern Chinese dumplings. So okay. we have that as well. Even um, on our Facebook, we have something called Meat Bone Tea Soup. We, we just posted a, a, a post on that on our Facebook page not too long ago. Ah. Meat Bone Tea Soup, even that, we have two versions. We have the Cantonese version and we have the Teochew version. Wow. So it's two different. One is black and herbal. The other one is peppery and white. Yeah, what was that thing I saw on your website that I just wanted to die? You said it was a minute away. It looked beautiful, beautiful. Ah, the, the, the noodles? The stir-fried rice noodles? No, flat, no, flat with the soy. No, no, it was something. Those um, dumplings. Uh, dumplings. Those oh, wow, they look so good. It's really good. Pan-fried. It's a bit like the Japanese gyoza. Yeah. Wow. We call it like guot here. Yes. His, his, his dad and mom recommended it to us, actually. Yeah? Oh. We're big fans. Well. It's just cross generation. Yeah. That's something cross generations. Yeah. It's, it's so you're saying so besides all the glitter and the advertising and the billi millions of dollars that go into convince yeah. people to spend the two, too much money. Food. 
there's like actually street food, there's street culture, there's history of people migrating, there's, and all of that is in their spices, their unique way of expressing themselves. So and, and, and it's, and it's, not in, in, it's not in many countries whereby you have something called a hawker center, whereby you have a huge umbrella structure and then you have all the street food all packed in one small place. So Singapore is small, yeah. so you get, your, you get bang for buck. If you walk every square foot you walk, you get to see a new street store practically. Wow. So it's like and prices, what would it cost for per person? We're talking about like meal. two or three US dollars. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you have to tell me how to get there. <laughs> we have we have the best chicken noodles just downstairs. Yeah? Yes. Soy sauce chicken. Is it spicy or no? No, uh, but we can add well, the chili inside. Yeah. 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 yeah, throw away the chili. Yeah. You know I wrote a post called 99 um, I know nothing and 99 other things the world taught me. And one of them says when they say not spicy, they're lying. <laughs> well, in, this, in this case, in this case, they're not. You step in a little India, then yes. Oh yes. my God! <laughs> People are like no spicy, no spicy, and, and we're all like. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> That's why they're telling for laksa. There's this dish that uh, it's called laksa. laksa. It's a uh, coconut curry uh, and and a bit of uh, I don't know chili and spices and fragrant stuff and maybe shrimp, dried shrimp wow. inside it. Um, you tell you it's not, if you tell you it's not spicy, it's like you just mean it's mildly spicy. Right. If you add the chili, that's to make it more, more spicy. That's called kamikaze, right? Kamikaze, yes. <laughs> In Singapore, they actually have those Japanese uh, ramen noodle stores that right. go crazy hot, <laughs> wild spicy, oh extremely chicken spicy. Chicken wings too, actually. Yes, chicken wings. You know, I think one day when I get upset with Kobe, and I can't, I can't imagine what would justify me to get that upset. <laughs> one day I get really mad for something. Maybe I I'll just forgive you people. if you have that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say forgive you and I'll make a video. I think the shop actually makes the noodles free if you get the, if you manage to eat the whole thing for the most like spicy one. <gasps> oh god, that's painful. I think it would like burn brain cells. <laughs> uh, more than that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Or you drip through a hole like acid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the table crumbles! Keep eating dear, it's free! <laughs> Don't worry, the food I put on Pillow and Toast are quite mainstream, okay. not too wild. So if you go to Pillows and Toast, look for Pillows and Toast um, in Facebook. Yep, Facebook. Page. And then they they put all these cool food recommendations. Yes. All yep. about less than like 10 minutes walk away. Oh Just nice. Just we're right middle of downtown. It's a cool place. It's a cool area where we are. Yes. It's like very hip, everything's right here. Well, we're in the middle of heritage culture. Okay. So all these buildings are really, really old. There's oh. a lot of rich heritage around here, but yet, all the nice swanky stuff, the glittery stuff, are built all around us, fridge around us. So okay. we just walk back easily. Yeah, everything's so easy to get to here. Yes. How how big is Singapore? <laughs> Forty kilometers by twenty kilometers. That's it. Forty kilometers by twenty. Kilometers. So if a Singaporean tells you it's far, it probably means it's one kilometer away. Right. If you think it's very far, it's probably two kilometers. <laughs> Three you kilometers, told me. yeah. Three impossible. kilometers is impossible. Too far to walk. Get, <laughs> get a, a cab. Get a cab. Get a plane. <laughs> Anything more than fifteen minutes is like not walkable in Singapore. Yes. Something. Something I don't get. How did a place so tiny become a country? Like it's, it's a city. It's a neighborhood. It's a province. It's a state. It's you know. How did this tiny dot become a country? It just. It doesn't. It, I don't know. it was part of the nation in the larger scheme of things. It broke away. For some old political reasons, yeah, you have to read a book. To was that. was this a port town? Yes. So that means that would probably explain why it's ridiculously expensive. Yes. Because there's a lot of money coming through port towns. Yes. Yes. So, so the, was it an economic thing? Did they say, hey, we can make so much more money than the rest of this country, so let us be our own entity and not have to be a, sort of give to the Malaysian government all the? I mean, I'm assuming I've never read. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of politics. Right? It's a bit of voting and stuff. So there were two camps of politicians. Okay. And one camp was getting really popular here, so they did like, divide the territory and you know you rule your area and rule my right. wow. that's simple as that. And I think the World War II experience also um, taught the locals at that point in time that they cannot depend on others. Wait, and wait, wait, was Singapore in World War II? Singapore was taken over by Jap by Japan during World War II. Ah, I see. And at that point in time we were a British colony. So it's, And the it, British did not come to uh, the British left. They surrendered. Oh that's right. Left to put it Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. They can rape our women, take our stuff. That's fine. We'll we'll just chill. Okay. I, I mean, they, they just went back to uh, protect their own country, so that I guess is part of. That also has a little bit of a head. So, so explain to me because I don't understand. The Brit Singapore was a British colony. Yes. It was no longer part of Malaysia. Uh, or was Malaysia also a British colony? Uh, Malaysia? Parts of Malaysia. Well, so that, that was still British rule. Yeah. And then the Japanese invaded. Yep. And what did they do? Did they do awful damage to this country? 
or were they a kind overtaking? Well, there was kind of, uh, I guess, same to as most parts of the places where the war finished, right? So yeah. there was quite a bit of suffering and pain and stuff. Right, But right. thankfully, it didn't last as long in the grand scheme of things. It was like three years and eight months really long. Three years? Three years and eight months. Eight months. Eight so months. it's just long. So but, your parents yeah. remember that? Your parents were, it was 1945? Probably, our parents oh. are probably a few years shy of it. Our yeah. grandparents would have been okay. in their prime okay. during okay. the World War. Wow. Our parents so were, this is a recent living history almost. It's still alive enough. 1945. Yeah. 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 So people are 60 years old. Yeah, Still. Really old. Yeah. So part of you saying is you understood you can't depend on others. Does Singapore have an army or military? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Every, all the guys are drafted in now. It's mandatory? Yes. Mandatory. Oh, like in Israel? Yes. Ah, exactly. Okay. But in Israel, I think the women... It's all uh, as well. Yeah. yeah. But women don't go to combat. Yeah. Women will not fight in, the, in combat. They will do all of the... All the other stuff, but not be on the... I'll tell the Singaporean line. women. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Why do women go to the army here? No, they they could volunteer. They they could volunteer. They could. It's not mandatory. Yes. How long is your army service? Mm, well, minimal minimally is about two and a half years of training, and then another. in these days it's two years for the younger chap, for the young boys. Yeah, okay. they got it. I didn't know that. that I, I mean, I, it's totally my ignorance, but I didn't know there were other countries in the world that had mandatory military service. Uh, I knew Israel. Like when I meet people, people are like that's so awful that the government makes their young yeah. go to the army. I'm like, well, you know, first of all, it's part of our reality. Mm. Second of all, you wouldn't want to walk in the streets and say, I didn't do army because everyone did. They'd be like, well, what's wrong with you? You know? Yeah. And third of all, there's a lot of good that comes out of that. True. It, it lessens your ego very quickly. Yeah. Yes. It builds up your character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Voice so do all, so all men that we meet, Singaporean, if they're from Chinese origin, Indian, Malay, they all serve yeah. in the military? We all do. Wow. So do you, that's that's a place it, where the guys bond together. Do you find it's a positive experience for most men? Or? It gets a little boring to the tail end, but most of it is yeah, yeah. usually quite, quite rewarding. Right. Especially the beginning portion. I find a lot of people actually make lifelong friends because they go through a lot of things together. A lot of best friends, yeah. Wow. And is it, um, do you have reserves? Do you have to go back every year and be retrained? Yes. For how long do you go back? Till the average about maybe 40, 42 years old. And for how long do they take you for the reserves? For like retraining? Um, not too long, a couple of weeks long. each year. Yeah. A couple yeah. of weeks. And then do you get to meet the same group you were with when you were, when you were 20? Uh, sometimes, it depends. Bigger group, but not necessarily small, 10 okay. people, same 10 people, but maybe a few hundred people, yeah. Right. How, what's the population of Singapore, more or less? Uh, uh, well, I, second. I know, sorry, what was that? Sorry, they're interesting. I, <laughs> they're waiting to play the um, Monopoly. Disney, Disney version Monopoly. Right, and I'm I, Pinocchio. <laughs> this is the lady and the tramp. <laughs> are you the lady or the tramp? <laughs> you guys are just so interesting. Okay, so so tell me again, population more or less? About 5.2 million maybe? Okay. No. It's a sensitive topic now. Sensitive topic. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, no. It's 5, 6 million. But um, there was this paper that got released somehow a month ago that saying that probably should go bigger. Everybody was like, oh, what? We don't have enough land. Ah. Yeah. It's so. probably all those expats. Uh, combination. Yeah. Even I mean, tourists also forms quite a big part of. I think local local is about four million. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all the all the five 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 is about four okay. million. Yeah. Awesome. So if someone wants to come to um, Singapore, we had a great time here, and we really appreciate you guys having us. <laughs> and their their staff is so nice. Um, um, thank you. So we loved it. Really nice place. There are two pillows and toast. Yeah. yeah. This one's seven months old, and that one's two years old. Yes. Yeah. The sign is on Upper Cross Street, there was on Moss Street, they're back to back. Okay. So we still have to visit. Okay. Yeah, you should come over. You should. For the Nintendo Wii. <gasps> Wii. For the massage chair. The massage chair. <laughs> for the feature wall, they're done by the Korean artist. Hey, by the future wall? For the future wall? Feature. No, no, the feature, feature wall. Oh, they do. The, the wall murals. Right? Oh, the artist, the, the students who said. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to come check out the Pillows and Toast next door. If you have any questions, you know, um, their contact form, you write to them and Jason reads them. Well, actually, his wife reads them and then she decides if he gets to read them or not. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> and then way later down in the pecking order, eventually, maybe, it's passed on. You know, So you can write to them on the contact form. Yeah. Um, any questions you have about Singapore or, you know, color blindness? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that. Definitely Ooh, that. Lots food. Of food. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. We had a wonderful time here. I really loved it.
friends. We, 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 we love having you guys here. Yeah. The staff love having you guys here. They've been telling me so much about Gabby and Kobe are so fun. The family, the kids are so cute. <laughs> yeah. Jessica says she doesn't like kids, but she's still, she's still falling for them. Isn't that great? This one girl that works for Jessica, she's like, I don't like kids, but they're cute. <laughs> they're cute, but I, I don't like kids for the record. Yeah, but they're so cute. <laughs> Jessica, if you're seeing this. <laughs> and she was going to come back and play Monopoly with him. Oh. And one of the girls, um, Min? Ming. Yeah, Ming, yeah. Ming bought them snicker bars. Uh, she bought them for life. That's it. That's what happens when you have blonde hair and blue eyes. Blonde hair and blue eyes? My oh, son? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably charmed the two girls. He doesn't know it. He doesn't like it. He often says, Mom, I want to have brown hair and brown eyes like everyone. He gets so much attention. I figure when he's going to hit about 20, He's gonna realize that it's a good thing. Yeah. And then I'll that will teach you. Yeah. Uh, Great. <laughs> All we need is have Kobe talk to him about girls. Oh god. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's time for the Monopoly. Yes. yes. We're gonna go play Monopoly. Thank you guys. Right. Awesome. Bye bye. bye.